I'm excited to have this opportunity again to open the Word of God with you this evening. I wanted to invite you to turn with me to the book of Proverbs as we get started tonight. Proverbs in chapter number 3. Well, in the announcements, Pastor was mentioning about the new lights on the uh, gate posts out there and said uh, that you wouldn't get probably a chance to see them this evening, uh, but it depended on how long I preached. Don't do that to me, Pastor. It's like saying sick them to a dog. Uh, <laughs> it's like now I've got a goal, you know. <laughs> got to preach till the sun goes down. Uh, no, I, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, let the Lord lead on that instead, but uh, um, thankful again to open the Word of God with you tonight. Now, I'm thankful to open God's Word with you this evening, but I'm certainly uh, mindful uh, that the message this evening is going to be a little bit different than what I would normally bring in, in sort of the form of the message. Uh, some messages uh, come out one way and some another way, and this one's a little bit different. And I'm I'm a bit concerned that uh, of any message probably any of you have ever heard me preach, this one I'm a little more concerned you might misunderstand something. <laughs> so if, if I say something that sounds really weird to you, I probably didn't mean it that way, okay? <laughs> but what we're going to talk about tonight is getting out of balance. And the title of the message this evening is Getting Out of Balance. And I know that there's a lot of areas in our life where uh, we talk about balance and about having the right sort of balance in situations in our life. And I don't want you to think that uh, balance is always the answer or that it's never the answer. But the truth is that Christianity, in a lot of senses, is not about being balanced. The truth is that a lot of times in our lives, it's better actually for us to be out of balance than in balance. And that might sound strange because a lot of times in life, we're trying to find a balance point between the different choices we have to make and the different responsibilities we have and uh, scheduling responsibilities and those sorts of things. Now, it's very uh, difficult to... um, to, to preach a message uh, on balance from scriptures in the sense that the word balance only shows up eight times in our King James Bible, and uh, all of them have to do with uh, weigh scales. <laughs> so they're not really applicable to what we would normally think about, about having balance in life. Uh, they're about, their verses about weigh scales or about weight or heaviness or lightness. But I think it's valuable for us to talk about some themes this evening from the Word of God that connect with balance. Now, I'm going to use balance not from the scriptural sense, but uh, like Jesus, when he preached, he often would use things from everyday life uh, to help us understand spiritual truths. And so I'm going to use balance sort of as a bit of a parable this evening for us to talk about some biblical principles that I think are illustrated by the idea of being out of balance. All right, let's start off by looking at our text here in Proverbs 3. We'll look at verses 5 and 6, and I think they'll be tremendously helpful. Starting in verse number 5, you can follow along. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Let's pray. Father, we greatly need your help and wisdom as we open your word tonight, and we need your guidance to instruct and uh, direct our hearts. And Lord, I pray that all that's said in this hour would be to our help and to your glory that uh, you would be pleased with what's said and done, and that we would be drawn closer and closer to our Savior and to the purpose you have for us. We pray that uh, you would use this time in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I wanted to give you several thoughts on this idea of balance in the Christian life. I've got five points this evening that I hope will be a help to each of us as we think about balance. The first thing about balance, when you think about those balance scales that you would think about in Scripture, or whether you think about uh, balancing your body as you walk around and interact in this world, uh, balance is, is dependent upon uh, where the center point is. You might even think physically about your center of gravity, right? That's the center of your balance point. And if that center of gravity gets one way or the other, you get out, out of balance. But when we talk about finding balance in our lives and the decisions that we have to make, Really, oftentimes what we can fall into is that balance is, first of all, uh, about my measurement of center. Where is the center point? That's the key for balance. If you're trying to carry something, I've many times on a job site had to carry things one way or another, carrying lumber and different things, and that's the key to that is the balance point, right? When you pick up a stack of two-by-fours and put them on your shoulder to carry them to the other side of the job site, the balance point is key. And after you do it a fair bit, you start to get pretty good at guessing where the balance point's going to be, and you can just grab it and throw it on your shoulder and walk off with it. But if you misjudge where the balance point is, that can be very difficult, (laughs) because all of a sudden, you're falling over. And it's about assessing the the true center point of that situation. And uh, when we are going through life, we physically 
quickly learn as we, you know, our son is, is just learning to walk. He's just over a year old and learning to walk, and he's getting used to his physical maneuvering in this world, and, uh, and his balance isn't quite as good as it will be, uh, Lord willing. Anyways, it's got to get better from here. And, uh, and as we grow and develop, we, we get used to knowing where our balance point is. We know how far we can lean one direction before we go cra- all the, crashing all the way over. But the truth is that, spiritually speaking, when we come to Christ and uh, Christ comes into our life, our physical, earthly realities uh, do get shifted. Because it's just like if you're walking down and all of a sudden you had a weight added on to you, say a weight of a backpack, it, it changes your center of gravity. All of a sudden you have to lean forward a little bit uh, so that you don't fall over backwards. Well, in a similar way, I use that as an illustration that when we come to Christ and Christ comes into us, uh, our spiritual center of gravity changes. Because when we come to Christ, when Christ comes into us, we are made new. (laughs) The Bible tells us old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And when Christ comes into my life, my spiritual equilibrium is completely different than what I thought it was before I came to Christ. Christ changes so much about who we are and so much about what's important to us uh, that if we keep trying to live our lives with our old uh, measurement of center, uh, we're going to find ourselves crashing a lot. <laughs> uh, we're going to find ourselves falling over a lot if we don't understand that God gives us the direction to understand where the true center of our lives really is. Uh, one of the things I used to do as a hobby, I haven't done uh, any of it in a long time, was I, I got into wood turning with a lathe. And one of the things that's really interesting is that when you put a piece of wood on the lathe to start turning it, if you start, start the motor turning and this piece of wood is spinning, if it's, if it's out of balance on that axis, uh, it creates a tremendous amount of vibration. <laughs> and sometimes if it's not fastened well, your piece of wood might end up on the other side of the workshop. And that center of balance can really throw things off if it's not just right. And when Christ comes into us, there's an additional weight of value added to our lives, the tremendous purpose and beauty of Christ that's added to our life. And my natural self doesn't account for that in its measurement of its true center point and its true point of balance. And what we find in the scripture is that we need to acknowledge that God is the one who understands what the true center of life is meant to be. And it's not meant to be about me or about my perception, but rather I need to trust in the Lord's direction. And that's really where we find in this text here. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. We need to acknowledge that he is the center of my life now. Where it used to be my life before Christ, the center of it was just me. And boy, when the world starts revolving around me, it's got a big problem. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the line through the top, top of my head is not the axis of the universe. And when I realize that Jesus is at the center of all that needs to be in my life, then everything starts to find a new balance point. And when I ignore that balance point, I start to crash a lot. In fact, um, I like that the Pastor Crow went to 1 Corinthians 10, 13 this morning because I was thinking, boy, I'm going to 1 Corinthians 10 and 12 this evening. And that is, wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. (laughs) If we get the wrong assessment of the measurement of center in life, we're going to fall a lot. And you say, Pastor Gibbish, how do you know that? Because I've got lots of practice at that. <laughs> I know what it is to get my values out of balance and out of the, the, the correct measurement because what, what I think is the balance point really isn't. And when we live our lives with Christ as our center, to the world will look like we're out of balance. Imagine if you were walking along uh, with, in one hand, uh, a five-gallon pail of, of water. Now, that weighs about 50 pounds, right? Now, if you've ever carried a, a heavy weight on one side of you, you know you're, you're leaning the other way to try and compensate for that. Now, imagine if that pail was invisible. <laughs> Nobody could see the pail because it was invisible. Everybody who looked at you would think, that person's out of balance. <laughs> yeah, because they don't understand the true center of your life. When the true center of your life is Christ, you're going to look out of balance to everybody around you. But really, you've found the true point of connection to the reality that is in Christ. So the first thing about getting out of balance is that balance can often be for us about our own measurement of center. 
And we need to get beyond our measurement of what's the center of it all, what's the purpose, what's the goal, what's the values we live by. If we can get beyond our measurement of center and get into God's measurement of the true center of our lives, then we can find that being out of balance from the human perspective is actually the best place to live. It's the most stable place, it's the most safe place, and it's the most real place. The second thing I wanted to address about balance is that when it comes to balance, I think this is something that we learn a lot in, uh, in our uh, <laughs> Canadian uh, lifestyle. Having just come out of winter, we understand this, that when we're walking around, that one of the things that's very important about keeping our balance is about keeping our feet under us. Uh, sometimes people who immigrate to Canada from warmer climates or small children who haven't yet adapted to walking on ice uh, find it very difficult because if we are walking on a slippery surface like ice that we get used to uh, in the winter, and thank the Lord it's nearly all gone, um, we, can, we can, when we're walking on ice, if we're not used to it, uh, if our center of gravity gets too far off the center of our feet, <laughs> we're at risk because if your center of gravity is off and you slip, you know how it is. You're gone. <laughs> I mean, it's happened, I'm sure, to all of us more times than we would like to acknowledge. But when our center of gravity is in the right position over our feet, that's our safest place. We don't want to lean too far because we feel there's danger there in slippery situations. But spiritually speaking, what can happen to us is if we can get into that mindset of, I've got to keep my feet under me, uh, balance can become a place of self-reliance where I'm trusting in my ability to keep myself from falling. I'm trusting in my ability to depend upon myself. But the truth is, and this is where this idea of this message really stems from, is that so oftentimes, rather than, than keeping my feet under me, I need to lean in to what God is doing in my life. And in fact, I need to lean in to Christ. Our text here in, in Proverbs 3 and verse 5 tells us, lean not unto thine own understanding. He says, don't lean into yourself, lean into Christ, lean into God. And I love in John 13 and verse 23 where it says that there was on Jesus' bosom leaning a disciple whom Jesus loved, that the disciple whom Jesus loved was literally leaning on Jesus. And I know that Christ isn't here physically, but I believe that spiritually we will find we're far better to be out of balance spiritually as long as we're leaning against Christ, leaning in to Christ and his purpose for our life. We need to learn to lean. So often we get so comfortable with our feet underneath us spiritually and there's no risk, there's no danger, there's no uncertainty because we're depending upon ourselves. But the truth is, I can tell you, there have uh, probably been an equal number of times when I did have my feet under me and I still wound up in a disaster. <laughs> Keeping my feet under me is not the solution because I am fallible, I am weak, I get tired, I get distracted, I get frustrated, I get discouraged. But when I can lean into Christ, then rather than being self-reliant and depending upon myself and uh, leaning to my own understanding, when I lean upon Christ and I depend upon Him, it's not a place of self-reliance anymore. It's in fact a place of true safety and true opportunity. Because when we get comfortable with what we can do, uh, we are defeating what God's purpose is for our lives. The truth is, we too often at least I can, get comfortable in what I can do, in what's familiar to me, what's comfortable to me, what my abilities uh, provide the ability to do. And I know that that feels comfortable, it feels real, it feels safe. Um, and so many times there's things that, that maybe years ago would have been uncomfortable to us, but they aren't anymore because we've done it so many times. It starts to get comfortable, right? When I was 12 years old or 13 years old, I had to uh, stand up in our church youth program and uh, give a presentation. And I would have rather you'd shot me, <laughs> get me to stand up in front of people and have to speak. I really didn't want to do it. And now it's easy for me. I can stand up in front of a crowd of people and I can speak and I can talk and it could all be in, in my practiced abilities to do these things. And it's no longer uh, as scary as it was because I've gotten so used to it. But that can also be a problem if I start thinking that I can do it because I can do it. And just living my life with my feet under me, I'm stable, I'm comfortable, I'm secure, is not always the place that God has for me. The truth is that when I do what I can do, I get what I can give, which is no more than I already had, right? <laughs> if I only get what I can give, then I'm not benefiting anything. 
I've not gotten any farther ahead in my spiritual walk if it's just about what I can do. Look, I can stand up and I can preach, or I could stand up and I could sing, or I could stand up and I can lead in prayer, but if it's just what I can do, then that's no benefit to me or to you or to anybody. But when we get into a place where we learn to lean on Christ and get out of balance and get out of self-dependence, then we find ourselves in a place where miracles can start to happen, where God can do things because it's not about what I can do or about what you can do, but it's God saying, oh, this is my opportunity to really push this person past what they can do themselves. God's work needs more out-of-balance people in this world today. God's work needs me to be more out-of-balance in this world. Didn't I tell you I might get misunderstood? <laughs> if somebody goes on YouTube later and cuts in pieces this message, they can probably create something fright frightening. But, but what we need is not to be in the human idea of balance and keeping my feet under me and depending upon myself and my ability and opportunities, but rather to lean into Christ and to lean on Him for strength and ability beyond what I can do because that's where the miracles occur. Now, I can't make miracles. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I, I would like to be able to make miracles. I would. If I could, I would make miracles a lot more often. But what I need day in and day out is really to be able to depend upon Christ for what he can do, to lean into him even in those uncomfortable zones. So balance is, is first of all, often a measurement of, uh, about my measurement of center. Secondly, it's, it's something that can keep my feet under me in a place of self-reliance, which is absolutely destructive to a Christian life. The third thing about balance is that balance can be a place of faithlessness. If I get out of balance, I'm sure I'm going to fall. <laughs> That's how it is, right? You know it is physically. If you lean far enough, sooner or later you're going to fall over, right? And spiritually, that's so often the mentality we can be tempted to live in. I know that, that that's the right thing to do. I know that's what God's calling me to, but if I lean that far... I'll crash for sure. <laughs> I know I'll crash if I lean that far. I've got to stay balanced. And that's the danger. When we start trying to live in such a way when it's all about what we can do is it causes us to live in unbelief against the God who has called us to step forward by faith. In fact, in Habakkuk chapter 2, it says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. We need to live by faith, for without faith, it is impossible to please him, it says in Hebrews eleven six, 6. And so we need to live by faith, doing what oftentimes is uncomfortable to us because it is what God has called us to. In fact, this message is a little bit of that. I was trying to uh, prepare a message. I felt like God was leading me to talk about this theme of getting out of balance. And as I was preparing this message this week, I was I was wrestling with some of the things that I felt like I, I needed to say and, and trying to pull together some thoughts. And, and I said, Lord, you know, I really don't think that I can get this all pulled together this week. R Lord, I really think I need more time. I need to develop this. I need to clarify some of these thoughts. And the Lord said to me, isn't that the point of the message? <laughs> I said, Lord, but I'm too uncomfortable to preach that message this week. And he said, that's the point, isn't it? You're not supposed to always be comfortable. It's supposed to be that sometimes we say, Lord, I know you want me to do it, and I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to work at all, but you led me to this, and I'm going to lean into this. And I, so I said, all right, Lord, I'm going to lean into this message. And, and I began working further on, on trying to develop some thoughts for this message tonight. Even though I knew I was going to have to lean out of my comfort zone, I have to do that day by day if I'm going to live by faith. If I never get leaning in to God's call for my life, I'm never living by faith. I'm never trusting in God to get me through because I'm only doing what I can do. And what I can do is going to get boring really quickly because we all need to learn to lean in to God, to lean on Him. And really, I mean, we can't see Him. If I called for a volunteer up here and said, okay, <laughs> Uh, there is an invisible glass wall here. I want you to take two steps away from it and then lean into it and it'll catch you. Uh, I don't think I'd get any volunteers <laughs> because you probably don't trust me that much and you shouldn't because I can't make invisible glass walls. But that's sort of how it feels in our Christian life, doesn't it? Because God calls us to do things and we can't see him. We can't reach out and touch his hand. We can't live our life literally leaning on Christ physically. But that's what we're called to do spiritually, right? 
we're called to be those who are living by faith and leaning beyond what we can see with our eyes and say, God, I know you want me to do that, but I can't see it. By faith, all we can do is just lean in and expect that he will catch us. Now, he does give us many promises in his word. And where we have a promise from God and God's given us leading and clarity, we can afford to trust him. We can. The truth is, you'll never soar when you're stable. It just doesn't work like that. You'll never walk on water when you're still wearing your seatbelt. <laughs> right? But God calls us to live by faith. And we'll never live by faith if we live in fear of falling. We've got to trust the Lord enough to lean. And leaning makes me uncomfortable. And I think probably for some of you, you can relate to that. I don't like falling. Now, I'm not scared of heights. I, I'm fairly comfortable being at high, high heights. But I don't like falling. I've done that. I, I've, I've experienced that. I've fallen off of several roofs. <laughs> I've fallen out of a tree or two. Um, I, I've fallen enough to know what it feels like. And I don't like being, being uh, tipped over too far. I like to stay stable. But the reason I think that I'm not scared of heights is probably because I have a lot of confidence in my ability to keep myself from falling. <laughs> uh, I grew up climbing trees, and uh, you know I've worked at, at a lot of heights, and God's given me a decent sense of balance, and, uh, and so I feel comfortable at heights. But I think that's more about self-confidence than it is about just realistic perspectives. And spiritually, we can get into that where it's all about our self-confidence that we think, oh yeah, I can handle this, I can handle this. But we need to get beyond that comfort zone and say, Lord, where do you want me to lean? <laughs> How far do you want me to push to get out of our comfort zone? We need to trust the Lord enough that we can extend ourselves beyond what we're used to, beyond what's comfortable, and beyond what perhaps even people in our life think is a good idea. Because not everybody sees what God has shown us. Not everybody sees the truth of the word of God. Not everybody sees the truth of our relationship with Christ. And the more we develop our faith walk with God, the more we learn that every time he leads me to lean, he catches me. <laughs> every time. Has God ever failed us when we've trusted him before? No. And yet we continually struggle, I believe, so often with this need to lean in to God's call. It's challenging, and it's difficult. Uh, I was listening to a preaching podcast this week, and the pastor was talking about um, his beginning in the ministry as a pastor. He was actually working as a Christian school teacher at the time, and a church contacted him and said, hey, we, we need a pastor. And he said, oh, yeah, I've, I'll give you a couple of names of people you should, you should consider. And they said, well, we, don't really, we weren't calling because we were looking for names. We're calling because we'd, like we'd like to ask you to come and be our pastor. And he said, uh, absolutely not. <laughs> he said, I never had a desire to be a pastor. I never had an interest to be a pastor. He was just happy teaching in a Christian school. And they said, well, would you pray about it? And he said, okay, pray about it. And, uh, and as he prayed about it over the next few days, God really confirmed in his life that this was what he wanted him to do. And this is the way he said it. He said, up to that point, he said, I had preached uh, a total of seven times in my life. And he said, three of the times I was so nervous, I threw up. <laughs> and he said, the other four times, the audience threw up. <laughs> That's what he said, not me. But but he had to really go outside his comfort zone. Can you imagine if you'd only preached seven times in your life and next week you're the pastor, <laughs> you know? And, and yet God used him. And he was able to be a huge blessing to that church. And God has been using him now for several decades. But as we go through those challenges of life, sometimes we have to go in those situations. Now, I'm, not, I'm not saying God's going to call all of us to do something to that extent that we go from seven sermons to being the pastor. But God does call us all to live by faith. And it might look different in a lot of our lives as to what God would lead us to this week, but God can call us to live by faith and get into that place of trusting in the Lord. And walking by faith is powerful. Maybe it's about faith to speak to somebody about Christ this week. Maybe it's uh, the faith to begin giving to missions or to begin tithing. Maybe it's faith to respond to a, a ministry opportunity that we're scared to step into. Maybe it's faith to, to involve ourselves in somebody's life that we're not sure if we can uh, do everything that might be expected of us. God can call each of us into different opportunities, but if we'll have the faith to say, Lord, where you lead, I will follow, 
we can be surprised at how great God's miracles can be. But we won't get there until we learn to lean. So we've seen, first of all, that balance can be about my measurement of center. I need to let God define the center of my life. Balance also can be keeping my feet under me in self-reliance. Thirdly, balance can be a place of faithlessness, where I'm not learning to trust the Lord and live by faith. The fourth thing I wanted to draw your attention to is that balance can also be a place of compromise. Now, I know compromise is not always a dirty word, <laughs> but the truth is some things we should never compromise on. We should never compromise on what the truth is. We should never compromise on our beliefs in God and in his word. We should never compromise on our values, what's, what's true and what's important. These sort of things, I'm not saying we should compromise any of those things, but, but balance can be a compromise, right? If you think about those weigh scales that can tip one side or the other, it's about finding a place where there's equality and balance on both sides, and we're trying to, if we scooch this one a little this way, then we can find balance. And some things, is, some things are okay to compromise on, okay? I, I'm not saying compromise is always wrong, but we shouldn't always be looking for a middle ground that will offend no one. <laughs> because the truth is, if you, try, if you do seek to get to that middle ground that offends no one, you might find out that you've offended both sides. <laughs> and I'm not saying that everything is about sides, but it shouldn't always be about being try to ple- trying to please everybody and trying to find a compromise where everybody's going to be happy with what we're doing and what we believe. Because what we need to do is we need to pay a lot less attention to which side is which and really give our attention to, I want to be on the Lord's side. <laughs> Whatever it is that people think or people believe, I just, I just want to be on the Lord's side. And I love this principle that uh, I got years ago from a Reformers Unanimous ministry that says this, if God's against it, so am I. Well, that's a good place to start with everything, isn't it? <laughs> and I would say, if God is for it, so am I. And that might seem out of balance. It might not uh, level with everybody else's sense of balance. But if God is for it or God is against it, I want to just lean into God's values and not into the values of my perceptions or the values of other people around me. And that should always be done with grace. I'm not saying we should be abusive or abrasive to people. Well, I I don't care if you agree with me or not. I'm just going to, no. We need to be gracious and kind towards people. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, the scripture says in Colossians. But at the same time, if people don't agree with us or people don't uh, appreciate the choices and values we're taking, as long as we can say, look, this is what God said, and by his grace, I'm going to stay with the Lord on this, then that's the right place for us to abide. Balance can be an excuse for compromise. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. (laughs) He's saying, stand fast in the faith, in the the doctrine and truth and faith that God has given to us. We need to stand fast in what God has given to us and not be looking to find a way to balance everybody else's opinions and find a middle ground. Let's stay strong on God's purpose and calling for our lives and not back down from that, but that our lives would be so leaned into God's direction and purpose that even if other people think we're out of balance, it doesn't matter. Because we have put our lives leaning into God. We have leaned into his call and his purpose. We have leaned in to his truth. And, uh, and we don't need to back down from that. You know what? If you're right, you don't need to compromise it. <laughs> if you've got the truth, you should hold fast to that truth. And don't we have the truth in God's word that we can depend upon, we can build our lives upon, and we can, we can construct something in our life by God's grace uh, and in this world by God's grace that will stand through the storms of life. If we don't, uh, don't live our lives trying to find a middle ground that will offend no one. Because if we live in that middle ground, even if we manage not to offend anybody, we might actually end up offending the Savior who died for us. If we would, we, if we would be forced to choose a side, let's just choose to lean his direction. Uh, the, the theme that pastor has chosen for our church for this year is looking unto Jesus. And I think if we lean towards Jesus, we'll always be on the right track. The, the fifth and final thing I wanted to address this evening is that balance can be a place of equality, a place of equality. And the truth is, there's not always equality of options in life. There's not always an equality of choices in life. Sometimes you've got two options on the table, and, and it can be about trying to find the balance between two things, but sometimes there's one that's the right thing to do based on God's word, and the other one isn't. And so we don't always need to be seeking balance, but what we need to be seeking is to do the right thing. The the duties of life that God has given to us never conflict with each other. They always complement each other. 
And it's important for us to let God lead us into choosing the right things in our life day in and day out. That as we labor in God's purpose for our lives, we should worry less about balance and more about the directions of God. That God calls us to the purpose that he's given to us. God has called us to live a life a certain way, to believe certain things, and to value certain things. And whether or not it seems balanced, we can lean into Christ. Because Christ is more important than balance. Now, what I'm, I'm talking a lot tonight about living a life of faith and leaning in to God's call for our life and leaning upon him and not depending upon ourselves and our own abilities and our own strengths. And I know that sometimes it might seem like there's some, some difference of perspective on what we might need to do. And I do want to give some clarification on this. You might remember uh, there was a time when Jesus was being tempted by the devil in the wilderness and the devil said to him, he brought him to the pinnacle of the temple and said, go ahead and jump off. The angels will catch you. That's not what I'm telling you to do, okay? <laughs> Don't jump off just because somebody told you to. But what we can do is, you remember Peter in the boat in the storm when Jesus was walking on the water. Remember what Peter said to Jesus. He said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter didn't step out of the boat until he knew Jesus was calling him to do it, right? And so I'm not saying live your life just recklessly throwing yourself off of every balcony you can find. Because guess what? The angels won't always catch you, okay? It doesn't work like that. But what I am saying tonight is if God is telling you to do something that requires a lean, lean. <laughs> he will hold you up. He will sustain you. If God has called you to do something that's scary, that's uncomfortable, and that feels outside of your comfort zone, if God has led you to it, God will take you through it. God will give you the grace to come through that. And that's where we need to live our lives with a reckless abandon in service to Christ. To say, if Christ has called me to this, I don't have to understand it. I don't have to see how it'll turn out. I don't have to have the approval of all the people around me. But if God has called me to it, I can go forward with this, trusting that God, by his grace, is going to carry me through that I can live in victory and miracles because I am trusting upon his strength, not upon my center of gravity, not keeping my feet under me, but keeping his uh, everlasting arms under my life, supporting me all my journey through. And wouldn't it be a powerful, powerful thing to live a life that nobody can explain except to point to God? That's what a life of faith looks like. When God is doing a work in my life, when God is doing a work in your life, that people say, that does not make any sense. There is no reason on earth that they should be living like that, but it's working. <laughs> How can you explain that but God? And that's where I want to be in my life. I want to be living a life that spiritually might look to many like I'm out of balance. But I'm so far out of balance only because I'm so leaning upon Christ. I'm so leaning in to God's call for my life that whatever it is that he has for me, that that's where I'm going to end up. I'll give you a little hint. This might sound silly, but when it comes to the decisions we make in our lives, we usually land in the direction we lean, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I want to land closer and closer to Jesus. And so I want to keep leaning more and more towards Christ. If I just try and keep my balance and keep my balance, my perception of balance is as deeply flawed as my perception of a lot of other things. Because it can be so shaded, right? You know, we just came out of winter, and I mean, it was like 12 degrees out today. And man, I was just about ready to get my t-shirt out, and you know, I, was, I was ready. It was so nice and warm out. I remember a couple of weeks ago, it hit two degrees above freezing, and I was driving in my car with the window open. Why? Because I'd become acclimatized to winter. <laughs> if it was August and it was two degrees out, I would have the windows up, I would have the heat on, I'd be looking for a sweater, right? But we get so used to things that sometimes it skews our perception of reality, right? And spiritually that happens too. So we cannot depend upon keeping our measurement of center, keeping our feet under us, and depending upon our perceptions and our measurements and our realities, because we can be so confused <laughs> so easily. And yet when we lean on Jesus, lean on those everlasting arms, lean upon his calling, and really lean in to what God has called us to do in this Christian life, that's where the miracles start happening. Because over and over again, God takes us up on eagle's wings.
Now, I don't know about you, but one of the things that I have for many years really wanted to try is, um, I don't know how many of you be familiar with this, but it's called wingsuit base jumping. Do you know what that is? <laughs> it's where you have a suit on where when you put your arms and legs out, there's fabric in between so you can glide like a flying squirrel. And you jump off of a cliff with this on, and you can glide through the air. And then when you get to a certain point, you pull your parachute, right? Because you're not that crazy. But, I mean, I've seen videos of this, and I think, man, that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> that looks exhilarating. That looks exciting. And some of you are thinking, Pastor, give us your crazy. <laughs> so, like, I know, I know. I probably never do it, but it looks exciting. But that's what I think, it's sort of, to me, a picture of, what God has called us to in the Christian life, that sometimes we get so used to what's comfortable and safe that we never get to soar. And wingsuit base jumping, yeah, it's extremely dangerous. Don't, don't start doing that without checking your life insurance policy first, okay? <laughs> because you might not be covered. Um, but in the Christian life, Christ is our security. And so if he tells us to do something that feels like jumping off a cliff, it's okay because he's got us. He's right there alongside us. And we can get out of balance and we can live by faith and we can see what only God could accomplish. Living by faith is more powerful than if I was to jump off the cliff without a parachute. <laughs> because God can spiritually make us soar. And God can take us to new heights. And that's my prayer for my life. That's my prayer for your lives. That God would teach us not to rest upon our perceptions not to rest upon our abilities, but to really cast ourselves upon him, to throw ourselves with reckless abandon in his direction, that knowing that where he has called us, he is able also to keep us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your help and grace with this message tonight, Lord. I know that it's challenging sometimes to, to convey the truths that are in my heart, but I pray that each of us would leave this place tonight with a fresh, renewed encouragement to really throw our lives upon you and really follow your leading and calling upon our lives that whatever it is that you lead us to, that we would hold nothing back, that we would just cast ourselves upon you, trusting your grace, leaning into your calling for our lives and knowing that you are exceeding abundantly able to do beyond everything we've ever asked or thought. Lord, I pray that as we prepare to wrap up this service tonight, I pray that we would be led of your spirit and our lives will be cast upon your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.